Okay, let's answer some questions from the last market outlook. I have not had a chance to look at any of these. As for the last couple of days, I've been doing my tax returns. I do have an accounting firm that does that, but the initial draft that I saw had, ugh, let's just say, nope, nope. This is what happens. Large accounting firms, you think that there are experienced people doing it. There are not. Uh, you're being billed uh, partner hours, but it's some intern, some lower level person that's doing it, and they don't have the full understanding, and nobody reviews it. And billable hours, billable hours, that's all they care about. For an accountant, find a good independent, somebody who uh, you know doesn't live work within a partnership structure, and you'll actually uh, get it done right. Uh, once you go to a partnership structure, it's not about doing it right for you. It's about billable hours and maxing, maximizing uh, the uh, amount that they charge you versus what they pay out, and it's lower level people doing it. That's my rant. Are you still planning to do more shorter weekly videos when fresh economic data and reports come out? That is the plan, uh, but um, once the CFA content comes out, uh, we tend to get it uh, around uh, February, uh, March, and then we have all the way to uh, early May to get it up. So it is a sprint to get there, and there's not a lot of time uh, for a lot of extra stuff, but that is the plan. What do you think about the concept of fiscal dominance? The idea is that when debt to GDP is high and deficit spending is also high, then rising rates may actually exacerbate inflation. Yes, it does because that just drives the deficit even higher to finance the interest expense. That's exactly what it does. So Fed policy may be overwhelmed by the fiscal policy. Yes, when you have fiscal policy that is irresponsible, when you have debt to GDP that is in troubling territory and your elected officials are not troubled by it because they see the deficit as a re-election tool, as a campaign tool, uh, they don't see it as taxpayer dollars, they see it as re-election dollars, as, can as part of their campaign fund. Uh, yeah, that is exactly what happens. Uh, so, unfortunately, um, you don't have responsible government in uh, the North American democracies. I don't know when we're going to get responsible government, but in the end, you got to blame the voter uh, for not holding the politician to a higher standard. Uh, you do have... Uh, the ability to control who is the leader of that party through the primaries and well everyone abdicates their responsibility both sides really just vote for someone to embarrass the other side oh this will really show the other side this is the only person that could beat the other side they, they, they just don't want the other side so much they vote for someone who's exactly opposite that's the wrong thing to do they should vote for somebody who's a centrist they should vote for the person that's going to be right not the one that's, you know, going to own the other side. But that's where we are. Regarding your position that the Fed will have to cut rates due to interest costs, doesn't that call into question its independence? No, no. Independence means that it has no influence uh, from government. In other words, there's not somebody from government picking up the phone saying, hey, you got to lower rates. So that was Nixon. Nixon uh, was uh, very hands-on with the central bank because he felt he couldn't get re-elected with unemployment so high. Independence just means that they make their own decisions, but in making their own decisions, they can factor in other things. So they can look at the amount of debt, amount of interest that has to be paid on the debt, and they can factor that in for the long-term growth potential of the economy. It doesn't call into question their independence. It just is a variable that becomes important at this point. Wouldn't that encourage the Fed to lower rates during fiscal deficits to assist in financing costs? Well, the deficit is not, is, is not, the, not the problem. It's the debt, right? It's the debt. So if you run a balanced budget, the debt will only grow at the level of interest. So uh, the debt uh, multiplied by 1 plus I each year. If you don't pay down any of the debt, it'll just grow at the rate of interest uh, if you keep using debt to finance that. Uh, if you're balancing a budget and a line item in the budget has interest, your debt will remain constant. Any deficit you run adds to the debt. So as you're running deficits, 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 the debt keeps going up by the amount of the deficit. 
So no, it's not just the deficit itself. It is uh, the addition to the debt. Now there's two types of deficits you can run. Uh, there are capital deficits and there are operational deficits. If you're running a capital deficit, okay. There's nothing wrong with a capital deficit because it increases the productivity of a country in some particular way or the capital project has a stream of income associated with it. That's fine. Operational deficits are a problem because you're just going into deficit to operate the government. So all these social giveaways, all these social programs, that's operational. That's not capital. That's where a large part of the deficit is coming from. Any comment on the current situation in the Middle East with Iran sending drones to Israel, do you think will escalate further? I find this comical. Israel uh, punches Iran in the face. So Israel punches Iran. Iran hits back. And Israel says, we vow, we vow to, 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 to get back at you for this. This will not stand. Hold on a second. You punch them in the face first. By the way, there was just a big earthquake here right now. The whole house shook. It's a little bit of an aftershock. Okay, there it's gone. This, this, the whole place shook. It was pretty wild. That was a big one. I'm going to look that one up. That's probably at least in the fours. That was, a, that was a big one. That was my second really big one. I've been through a number of earthquakes here, but that was a big one. Um, so, you know, question mark here. I ask myself, what is, uh, what is different um, now versus 10 years ago, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, 40 years ago, 50 years ago? This has been going on for, for such a long time. There is deep hatred on all sides that's generational. And I don't know if there, I don't know if there's a solution. If there is a solution, it would have been found a long time ago. You would think that people would just get tired of it after a while and say, you know what, I'm just tired of this. It's gotten boring. But it just seems to be passed down from generation to generation. I don't know what to make of it. Um, it's it's not a unique situation or you know a flare up which has some things that you can point to and say okay well here here's what caused it. This is path dependency at this point. This is year decades and decades of of hate that simply now is just part of the culture. Uh, I don't know that there's a solution to this. It's hard to. It's just hard to analyze and come down to any particular thing other than it's the Hatfields and the McCoys, right? How do you solve a problem like the Hatfields and the McCoys? One side kills everyone from the other side. And, uh, I mean, that would be about it. Just purchased 2024 Level 1 course. I would advise you add an introduction section that tells us how to navigate throughout the course. You can even uh, only include uh, YouTube videos. So I, I don't really contribute to Level 1 anymore. Uh, so this would be a good suggestion to direct to uh, to Serify. Uh, has view on Canadian real estate changed given the latest news? Nope. Reduced population growth target? Nope. More supply announced by the Liberals? Nope. 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 First of all, if you look at the Liberals' record on delivering anything they promised, it's 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 horrendous. Um, so you know, it's 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 the Elon Musk of government you know, telling you that this is just around the corner, and it never is. So, uh, no, no, uh, they can announce everything they want. I don't think they're going to deliver on anything. No, it doesn't change, it doesn't change my, my views on it at all. Boston Fed President Susan Collins uh, recently had an interview with Mike Bloomberg and Keep, and she stated that reducing the balance sheet runoff and rate cut decision are independent. Why is that? Um, well, what they're saying is that, is that, if they slow down balance sheet runoff, it's not going to change their mind about what to do to the interest rate. It, it won't change their mind at all. They, they are independent decisions. Uh, and whatever plans they have for uh, the interest rate, whether they're going to keep it elevated all year long, does not, does not mean that they're going to keep monetary policy tight and just decide to, to continue on with the balance sheet runoff at the rate that it is. It is independent. Uh, I also noticed a spike in transportation in the latest CPI report as well. It appears that the drivers uh, are vehicle repairs and insurance. Uh, these two not highly correlated with one another. 
Minneapolis Fed has an interesting write-up on this on October 23. looks like a combination of supply chain issues and a significant labor shortage. I'm wondering if there's a secular trend in the cost of repairs. Um, EVs are quite expensive to repair. It could be, it could be something along those lines, but um, this is looking at the price of a certain type of repair, which is usually, there's usually a book price for these repairs. So if you say transmission, uh, an F-150 2017 engine size, there's usually a book that they can look down and it gives the rough amount of hours <clears throat> uh, that they would include in their quote uh, for changing a transmission. So they would look at the book prices period over period. I don't know so much that it is the type of repair uh, or the types of repairs today versus last year, but the type of repair year over year that they look at. Uh, but this is in one particular one particular thing. Uh, when I said that there is no general price inflation, uh, the key word here is general. That's not saying there isn't any inflation. It's saying there is no general price inflation. And the interest rate is meant to work on the general price inflation. So that means you take the basket of goods and it's going up. <clears throat> but when we look at CPI, we see that food is flat. We see goods are in deflation. When we look at services, we see it's a couple of components of services that are, that are running the price inflation. That is not general price inflation. That's very specific price inflation. Uh, when you kill inflation with the interest rate, whatever is left over is immune from the interest rate. Right? You can think of it like a sieve. Uh, is you put everything in this sieve and everything that falls through uh, is affected by the interest rate. Anything that's left over could not possibly be affected by the interest rate. At this point, given where we are and how long we've been this high and how long the curve has been inverted, anything uh, that has not responded is probably immune to inflation. And usually it's immune when it is supply-driven and not demand-driven. Supply-driven, higher rates actually make supply harder uh, to bring online. Um, what's your opinion on converting short strangles into iron condors when one side is going against you? ZB109131 strangle. ZB's not at 109 yet, is it? No. Not sure I could best resolve this one. Roll and try to rebound somewhat, let it run, close it off, and take 3x loss. Uh, uh, well, a couple of things to keep in mind. Uh, when you're selling uh, calls and puts, that you should be absolutely comfortable with the underlying being put to you or called away from you. You're doing it on ZB, which most brokers will say is a non-deliverable future. So that means you'd have to roll the future or close it off. That's a challenging thing to do it on. Uh, I, I really try to stick to those things that if it's put to me, I don't mind owning. Uh, 109, you're not at 109 yet. I don't know that I would, I would be too concerned about trying to do any kind of risk management here. Had you done the risk management, let's say, yesterday, well, today, you'd be like, ah, oh, I shouldn't have done it, right? Because, well, bonds rally. You have to step back from your position. Your position will, will create within you emotion. And emotion will cause you to do all sorts of stupid things. So you have to step back from the position. Sometimes it's better not to see if your position is working out or not, but simply just look at look at the market and think, uh, you know, do I see more downside here? Is is you know has the data uh, changed so radically that uh, you know whatever thesis you had is off the table? I don't think so. So I don't know that I would that I would be uh, too aggressive to say uh, you know I got negative. Uh, I'm in a negative position right now. Let me let me get rid of this. The path is is random. The pathway is random, but it's the end number 109 on the put. <coughs> I don't know. I don't think ZB is at 109. 109 is quite low. I uh, I would just be sitting on my hands. Transfer of wealth uh, from the U.S. to foreign holding U.S. debt about one third. Uh, this is from the CBO. The uh, Congressional Budget Office at, uh, uh, thinks it's about one-third that could grow to about 40%. So one-third of all that interest expense gets transferred. K 
Can we expect U.S. deficit spending and debt issuance to tower above that of the rest of the world as we try to forecast? Um, what? As the transfer of wealth from the U.S. to foreign holding, foreign holders of U.S. debt as it relates to the increasing <coughs> net interest debt. Well, it wouldn't be net interest. The increasing interest on debt going forward. Can we expect? U.S. deficit spending and debt issuance to tower above that of the rest of the world as we try to forecast this mechanism forward. Uh, don't know what you're saying here. Can we expect it to tower above the rest of the world as we try to forecast this mechanism forward? You mean the amount of interest and the amount of debt to be paid? I wouldn't forecast that forward. I would go to the CBO and look at their projections, and then I would look at their assumptions and ask, would I be more aggressive on the assumptions or more conservative? And if I'm more aggressive, it's going to be worse than what the CBO says. So use the CBO as your baseline. There's no point in recreating what's already been done. Use the CBO's forecasts and then determine what you think. Goldman thinks the, the forecasts from the CBO are too rosy uh, and that it's actually going to be worse than what the CBO is forecasting. I would start there. Any views again on how this relates to the sophistication of debt markets and hedging? Uh, well, the Treasury doesn't hedge. Right, the Treasury doesn't engage in hedging. It issues debt and it pays. It pays the interest expense. It doesn't hedge its interest rate expense. So I don't know that 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 means anything. What would it take for the U.S. and other governments to revert to balanced budgets? A revolution. A revolution. A centrist decides to uh, hold a revolution and uh, disbands the Constitution and and becomes a dictator for the next ten years because you're not going to get it done in a democracy. Uh, not not with everybody with their hand out. You need those people to vote, and there are more people with their hand out uh, 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 than in their own pockets. So, you know, good luck. Good luck with that. You need a dictatorship, a benevolent dictatorship, which dictators are rarely ever benevolent, but that's what you would need is a, 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 uh, a, a revolution, uh, the suspension of democracy, the suspension of the Constitution, because well, that's all wrapped up inside the uh, Constitution, right? Uh, and uh, a, a a balanced budget. Uh, it's not enough for one government to win such an overwhelming mandate that they put into law the balanced budget because the next government will just disband it. So it's not enough. You need uh, You need the same government for 20 years. But you can't run a balanced budget and hope to get elected because you got to make tough decisions. So no one's going to do it because they all want to get reelected. Everyone would like to do it, but they know that they, they'd never get reelected. And they know that everything they, they do would be undone by the next administration anyways. You need a dictatorship to get it done. Uh, that's, at this point, I have no faith in democracy. You need a dictatorship or, or you need a change in democracy. Uh, you need a point-based voting system. Uh, that works like this. Less than high school, uh, you can't vote. So uh, as far as a vote goes, no. Uh, high school, you get one vote. Uh, each uh, degree you have after that, you earn one vote for each of that. Uh, if you own property, uh, you get a vote. Uh, for every child you have, you get a vote. Uh, if your income is over, if you're in the top tax bracket, you get a vote. And you get a point system where you collect votes, which means one person can cast 62 votes, whereas another person gets no votes. Uh, I think you have to move towards that. Because when we talk about the majority, do we mean the majority of the people or the majority of, of the, um, I guess, uh, what's a good word? I don't want to say the influence, but the majority of the affected, right? So it's, it's, it's uh, uh, it, one person, one vote. And every four years, that's a broken system. It's a broken system. And, and so will the debts and deficits improve? Nope. No, they will not. No, they will not. I have always heard about balance sheet runoff being a good indicator. Mm, good indicator of what? I never really understood what this is. 
how the Fed manages it and what are its monetary implications. I think you could maybe lay it in a simpler way to making it. Well, that's a big that's a big question. Uh, first of all, you've always heard heard from where that balance sheet runoff being a good indicator. Good indicator of what? Who's saying this? Where are you hearing this from? And good indicator of what? How the Fed manages it? Well, balance sheet runoff is just that. You own a 10-year treasury, it matures, you say thank you very much. You don't, you don't buy any more. You just say thank you. Well, now it runs off the balance sheet, right? That's a big question uh, and more of a seminar uh, as opposed to a short answer because you're starting from a position of zero knowledge with it so it would be it would be almost a lecture to get that done i'll pass on that one but this first sentence try to avoid sentences like that uh, try to avoid sentences that rely on i heard i read i saw somewhere uh, because well where did you see it where did you hear it where did you read it who's the source what's the credibility of that source right so try to avoid sentences about you know i heard i read i saw somewhere can you demonstrate how to construct a yield curve using real-world data? Well, just go to uh, treasury.gov and click on data. The menu will pop open. Uh, take the first one, and you will get uh, all of the key rates. Go to a spreadsheet, enter each one in a row, highlight it, go to chart, and take one of these charts that does this, and you will get something that looks like that. Sri Lanka, we have sovereign debt default 2022, currently having a debt restructuring program. Hence, is there a way to calculate credit spread from government securities for Sri Lanka? Well, all you have to do is look at uh, a 10-year in your country. Look at the 10-year uh, UST, and that would be the spread against the U.S. I wonder if you had any thoughts on auto insurance inflation. <clears throat> I think as vehicles become more complex, I think as vehicles have more sensors, uh, it's probably easier on a collision to begin to damage those. You have a rear view camera when you back up, you get rear ended. Well, it's not just a bumper, it's a replacement of a rear view camera. So uh, as the vehicle becomes more of a consumer electronic device, then every accident does more and more damage. Uh, more EVs on the road do more damage because they are heavier. Uh, a EV pickup truck will weigh a lot more than a, than a conventional pickup truck simply because of the size of the battery pack. So it's going to do more damage. The more congested the roads become, the higher the incidence of, of accidents as well. So, I mean, it, it could be, uh, it just could be the cost of repairing has gone up simply because you're not just damaging a bumper anymore, you're damaging a bumper on a whole bunch of sensors. Fully agree that eventually huge debt burdens will drive governments to drive rates down. Yep. And how will the bond market respond to inflationary lower Fed funds rate? And who cares? Um, you'll do uh, what the Bank of Japan has done there, uh, a look into the future. <clears throat> You'll institute yield curve control to keep the cost of, of the government's debt in uh, you know in control. Otherwise, you're going to crush you're going to crush spending. Am I reading the report wrong? I was reading it as seven point six three nine percent for rent of primary residence as part of the broader shelter category, which comprises thirty six point one eight four of the CPI. Uh, I don't have it in front of me, so I'm going to pass on that one. Considering that MBS spreads are wider than historical average and corporate credit spreads being narrow than the historical average, would you buy MBS at this point? Yeah, I would. If gold production revenue is decreasing, wouldn't some of the costs of gold mining companies decrease? Nope. No, because it is uh, costs are based on production, um, and the output is based on on um, uh, uh, is based on the yield of the of the ore uh, or the grade. So uh, let's say you have an operation that can uh, mill 150 tons per day. 
uh, and that uh, uh, five years ago uh, you had seven grams per ton. Uh, three years ago you had 6.2 grams per ton. Uh, last year you had 5.1 grams per ton. Well, it still costs. You still gotta. You still gotta get that ore out of the ground and mill it. It still costs the same amount to mill. It's just the ore grade has been decreasing. And this is based on something called high grading, where when a mine first starts mining, uh, if you look at the grade of the ore uh, over time, it'll, it'll uh, prioritize the highest grade ore so that the grade of the ore decreases over time. Uh, the hope is that you can increase your milling from 150 to 170,000, uh, let's say, for the same cost to offset the lower cost in grade. Uh, but the gold in the earth is that is profitable to mine is slowly is slowly withering away uh, so there will be a point at which that's it unless gold hits five thousand six thousand seven thousand dollars an ounce the rest will not be reserves there'll be resources that and resources are not economical to take out of the ground until the price increases uh, so it is it is this it is the drop in uh, in grade over time how does U.S. Treasury Department determine what maturity of U.S. bonds to sell at auction? They uh, they post uh, their schedule, so every week they're doing they're doing T bills. Uh, every three months they do ten year bonds, thirty year bonds. They have a schedule. I think every month they do the two year, um, and and it's just done on the schedule. As far as how much, it's based on uh, the Treasury balance uh, and <coughs> the the anticipated uh, spending uh, that that is. Spend the difference between the spending and the income uh, and maturities. Uh, they don't pay down debt. They just simply issue more debt to pay off the last debt. Do they maintain target duration? They do. And convexity? I don't think they care about convexity. But they do have uh, they do have a duration. Is there any kind of website that gives insight on taxes and government spending? Congressional Budget Office, the Treasury. There's a whole bunch similar to Fred data, mainly interested in where U.S. tax dollars ends up. Well, the 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 budget, Treasury releases that every year, uh, so you can you can get that right from the Treasury. For your sector videos, what resource do you use to find the Ford PEs and EPS growth of XLK? You can use uh, sectorspider.com. Uh, you can use SP Global on the spreadsheet, the downloadable spreadsheet that they have that I use for the uh, operating earnings in the market outlook video uh, also break down the earnings for each sector um, curious if you looked at Hertz 2051 warrants I'll make it quick nope uh, how would you price a warrant like this is deep out of the money 25 years to expiration black shoals if I buy the warrants and sell calls against it like a diagonal oh I, I don't know I'll pass on that one Kind of an unrelated question, but do banks also look at the duration of their loans? They do. Or only at the duration of their investment securities? Nope. Nope. They manage the duration of their loans, uh, whether they be fixed rate or floating rate. Floating rate loans, well, that's great because they have zero duration. Uh, but uh, mortgages, yeah, that has a duration. How would you start an XLE position in the current environment to beat the S&P 500? Oh, to beat the S&P, I don't know if it'll beat the S&P 500. Beats the hell out of me. Uh, it'll do what it'll do, period. Uh, how would I use, how, would, how I can beat the XLE if I have options. But if the XLE is doing crap and, and, and S&P is doing great, well, there's, there's no... You know, there's no guarantee I'm going to beat the S&P. That's a whole different game altogether. I can beat the S&P 500 by holding the, the SPY and using options. But that does not mean that I can beat the S&P 500 with anything. Uh, if, if I'm holding something that just is not working out well, you know, I could end the year with good option income and a large embedded capital loss. No. Uh, you can beat the XLE by using options, but that doesn't guarantee that you beat the S&P. <clears throat> what is the impact of the balance sheet runoff and the movements within the repo market? Uh, well, the Fed would be less of a buyer. <coughs> 
and in being less of a buyer, uh, that means there's more of the inventory that needs to be financed and a greater demand for repos. Why are you preferring selling put options? Uh, is this a short-term income generating strategy? No, nope. no, it doesn't have to be. I've, I've, I've sold in the money options. So Capri is a good example uh, of something. Uh, it was trading in 4230, 4240 today. And um, I wanted some shares, but rather than buy, because uh, I've already bought and I think like, I think I have 28,000 shares. So rather than buy, what I did was I sold 43 puts. Uh, I sold 143 puts, sorry, 50, 43 puts. I sold 118 T16 puts today. 50 uh, uh, cap read puts at 43. If I get them, I get them. Great. That means that I would be buying them at something like 41, I think it was like 41.85, which was some 45, 50 cents lower than where the price is. If I don't get them, well then great. So sometimes I'll, I'll sell puts, not maybe for income, uh, but so most times uh, it's because I don't mind holding the underlying if I get it. And if I don't get it, okay. That's great. Also, better to be prepared for a sell-off in May, June. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Nobody knows. Nobody knows what's going to happen. I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. I don't know what's going to happen next month. Nobody knows. Anybody who, who tells you get ready for a sell-off in May and June is just making that stuff up. They don't know. Nobody knows. If rate cuts announced, Upside surprise for equities without any credit event. Might as well go long beta. Oh, uh, you're saying should I prepare for a sell-off or a rally? I don't know. Beats the hell out of me. What do you think? Um, the thing is nobody knows, okay? Not even the banks, not even the 30-year veterans on the street. Nobody knows. Nobody knows. All you can do is look at the situation and ask yourself, well, what do I think? I mean, in the end, earnings are going to be the driver of this. Interest rates are already high, right? Interest rates are high. So if earnings come in great for, Q, uh, for Q1 with high interest rates, then the market will probably conclude, well, what does it matter where interest rates are? Earnings are, earnings are fine and they're showing growth. It wouldn't, it wouldn't matter. I don't know that you're going to get any real sustained downward pressure on the market until earnings start to see significant downward pressure and they're just not uh, yeah you've got accruals at the at a very high level which calls into question the quality of the earnings but no one's questioning the quality everyone's just focused on the earnings so flip a coin on this one here and i've said this for some for some time as far as beta goes i have no idea i mean it's not responding to traditional signals and so it could go up, it could go down, uh, like your question says. I don't know. I don't really focus on beta at this point. I have no real beta uh, trades. I have individual names, which will have beta wrapped up in them, but I'm not making a specific beta play. Say transportation services, energy driven. How is motor vehicle more... You're, you're taking a couple categories from transportation services. You're taking maintenance and, and, and repair. Uh, there is delivery. Uh, there are, uh, you know, your transportation services. Uh, UPS is in there. FedEx is in there. Uh, other companies, uh, you know, that, that do last mile delivery transportation are in there as well. Uh, what would you say would help with core services inflation, if not higher interest rates? Uh, lower interest rates. Lower interest rates. The lower interest rates you'll get or zero interest loans for home builders who want to build spec houses. That would increase the inventory of housing very rapidly. Just an announcement that you're doing zero interest rate loans for home builders who build spec houses will, will put a stop to rising rents. Uh, will will cap rising house prices very quickly. Just the announcement of it, because the market is forward-looking, 
There has to be something where the market says, oh boy, supply is really going to increase, even if supply hasn't increased yet. You got to increase the supply. Wage inflation is not a big deal. Uh, if you have productivity in line with wage inflation, even lower than wage inflation, like wage growth or, uh, or unit labor costs, never mind wage growth, unit labor costs of around 4%, that's a problem. Wage growth of 6% with productivity of 7% is not a problem at all. Wage growth of 30% with productivity increases of 29% are not a problem at all. That's not going to feed through to inflation because, uh, yeah, your wages are going up, but, but the output is going up just as much so that the unit costs are remaining the same. So as long as you have increases in productivity, uh, even 2.5%, while, while, while wage inflation is 4.5%, you really only have 2% wage inflation, which is well below the 35 to 4% the Fed would worry about. And I think wage inflation, considering productivity in the U.S., is benign. It's, it's quite low. Fed will definitely cut rates this year. I fear the long end of the curve might not follow suit. Headline CPI, sticky, 4%. Well, it's not headline CPI that they care about, it's core PCE. So it's not headline, it's core, it's not CPI, it's PCE. Yellen easing by issuing bills instead of notes. Well, uh, hang on now. Uh, doing that to manage the, uh, right now, she's doing that to manage the inflow of tax dollars so that the treasury count is going to increase dramatically, is going to use some of that money to buy back specific securities. So what she's doing right now, you can't, you can't uh, extrapolate that forward. Fiscal spending at 7%, that's a problem. Growing and growing. Fed easing down the pace of QT. <coughs> that will actually help because they will be a net buyer of bonds. So that will drive down yields, not drive up yields. Conflicts in the Middle East, pressuring oil prices to the upside. Um, yeah. Unemployment at historical lows. Uh, healthy nominal GDP growth numbers. 750. Well, who cares about nominal, right? It's only real that we care about. Nominal is is, is not a big deal. 750 billion in the TGA ready to be spent. Well, that's call that an operational. That that's working capital. I, I wouldn't say that that is ready to be spent. That's just working capital. If your bond vigilantes will have none of it and keep the long end of the curve up, where are they going to go? You don't like U.S. bonds? Fine. Where are you going to go? Where are you going to go? Huh? You going to go to the U.K.? You going to go to Mexico? You going to go to South America? You going to go to Argentina? You going to go to India? You going to go to China? You going to go to Japan? Where are you going to go? Where are you going to go? So sometimes the situation may not be ideal, but if you got nowhere to go, you got nowhere to go, right? And if if there's trouble globally, where's money going to go? To Kazakhstan? To France? To Italy, to Greece, no, no, it's only going to go to one place. So this is this is a question of not outrunning the bear. This is the question of just outrunning the next person. Uh, so the U.S. doesn't have to be in a good position. The U.S. just has to be in a better position than anybody else. They just, relatively speaking, it has to look like the better place to be. So I don't know that bond vigilantes uh, will drive rates to six, seven, eight percent. Uh, without the whole world jumping all over those bonds. Insurance companies everywhere around the world jumping on those and locking in re guaranteed returns based on annuities that they've sold. Pensions just jumping all over that, completely immunizing uh, uh, their future payouts. I mean, it would, it would be, it would be uh, uh, I think, one of the best things to ever happen uh, to any fund that needs, that needs to... Uh, uh, collect a stream of income. I know I would jump all over it. I'd be all over it, all over it, easily. So, uh, no, uh, I'd rather lend money to the U.S. government than to Canada uh, any time of day. Um, so I, I just don't see where the bond vigilantes are going to come in on this because where are they going to go, right? The vigilantes usually pick on the weakest of the herd. Now, the herd may be sick, but you don't go after the strongest of the herd. You go after the weakest of the herd, even if the herd is sick. Well, the herd is sick, uh, but the U.S. is still the strongest of a sick herd. Uh, U.S.
USO two year nearing 5% and the Fed's historically following this. Does this point to little no interest drop? All we can infer in the two years what the market thinks and the market may be thinking that uh, but it doesn't point to no interest rate drop it just suggests that the market thinks there'll be no interest rate uh, drop is there any value in getting CMT no you're asking the wrong person I think I think uh, technical analysis is a big pile of bullshit uh, so now that may not be the opinion held by other people it's the opinion held by me I think ESG is a big pile of bullshit too. So, and if you asked me, should I get an ESG? Should I take gender studies? Should I become a market technician? My answer is just no, no. But you're asking me what I think, right? Uh, I'm, I'm extremely biased because having gone through this stuff in my early career days and coming to the conclusion that this is 50-50, this is, this is like you flip a coin and do just as well. No, I wouldn't waste my time. Uh, made a comment about having some of your personal capital being managed by asset managers. Curious for your reasoning on doing so. Because you need, you need strategic diversification. You would never put all of your money with one external manager. Well, I'm considered an external manager. I manage my own funds, but I have a particular strategy. You'd never put 100% of your money in one strategy. You need diversification of strategy. So it's just diversification. That other money is not subject to my biases. Do you expect to see an effect on the Canadian dollar on cuts? Uh, I think we've already seen it. The dollar is weaker, given everyone is cutting as well. I'm surprised the Canadian dollar is this low, given where mineral prices and energy prices are. I am surprised that it is this low and that it's not coming along for the ride. It, it is very surprising. Doesn't the balance sheet runoff act as latent tightening? Yeah, no. Oh, balance sheet runoff. Yeah, balance sheet runoff, yeah. I don't know that I would use the word latent. It is actual tightening in a sense. Uh, it reduces reserves. It's hypothesized that this is why there is no necessity for additional hikes. Mm, yeah, I mean, yeah. Contain a stock price target from an EV calculation one would subtract net debt. And divide the remainder by the share count. Uh, you do a little bit more than that, but oh, net debt. Okay, you get that. Yeah, okay. You, uh, there's a little bit more in there, but I see where you're going. However, the total debt excludes the firm's interest liability. Um, no, it doesn't. No, it doesn't at all. Uh, the present value of any bond is cash flow one one plus r uh, this is uh, the forward uh, the uh, spot rate uh, plus cash flow two uh, these are all your interest payments that you have to make and the last one is cash flow plus uh, uh, future value which is uh, the par value divided by one plus uh, r to uh, however long it is the present value of the bond is the present value of all the future cash flow so no it doesn't uh, no it does not I argue one should also subtract the PV of all interest liabilities. That is in the price of the bond. That is in the price of the bond. Because if the bond is, uh, let's say, 99.15, and you buy the bond for 99.15, if the company buys the bond for 99.15, it doesn't owe anybody anything. Right? That's the point of enterprise value, is if you paid all the debt at that point in time, what would the enterprise be worth? <coughs> Here's a short question. TLT, how do you approach the valuation when you say 90 is reasonable? Well, it's all based on yields. There is no company balance sheet here. There's no management. It's just a portfolio of bonds. And you look at the yields and you say, well, where is it reasonable? And that's all I'm doing. NEM and FCX, you advised. Uh, I sold June puts. However, in your other streams, you mentioned that your preference to stay within 30 or 45 days. June seems to be quite far, 67. Yeah, that's just what I did. Uh, you know, no real, no real uh, reason why they're out of the money and they're longer dated. I'm comfortable with that. It's you know, 30 to 45 is the right time if you're if you're selling for uh, income. Sometimes the there isn't much linear difference between a 45 day and a 65 day. It you know, just uh, looking at the puts, looking at the premiums, saying yeah, I like these better. That's all. 
Market updates. You give three values for IVP. I've looked at my IBA carry and I only see two, 52 week. And the other one sits right at the top of the strike column. Well, you have to go into settings and then for a IV percentile, you have to choose the 26 and, and the 13. Uh, you just haven't set them up, that's all. Uh, another one sits right at the top of the strike column. I assume this is current volatility. Uh, I don't have the screen in front of me, so I can't, I can't verify that. Copper gold, you mentioned GLD, HG a number of times, and I understand these are just indexes. No, HG is um, HG is copper. HG is copper futures. GLD is an ETF, which you can't buy or trade options on. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Am I right that thirds are just for? Am I right that thirds are just for indicative purposes? And when you want exposure, you go directly to the producers. Uh, no, HG is the futures contract on copper itself. GLD is an ETF that holds gold. Uh, what are your current thoughts on agency? I don't know that I have any different thoughts on agency day by day. At what price do you think it's worth entering the trade? If I agree your thesis regarding car... But similarly, given where we are in the rate hiking cycle, it seems like agency can give a significant capital appreciation. Well, agency is, is um, you're buying duration, right? Because it has a, um, a balance sheet uh, full, of, uh, full of MBS. And as rates go down, its repo financing costs will drop. But the uh, asset side of its balance sheet will increase. So its expenses will drop and its asset value will increase. So, yeah, I, I like agency, but agency is going to perform uh, when interest rates start dropping. Until then, it pays a nice dividend that you can use to buy more shares so that when it does drop, you do quite well. Typically try to adjust my portfolio dollar delta beta using options based on forward expectations. However, because of the relative small size of my portfolio and high option gamma, I'm forced to constantly rebalance in order to maintain the dollar delta beta within my target. Do you think using futures would be a more efficient way to get this done? Not if you have a small size of your portfolio. Futures, they move the wrong way, can wipe you out fast because futures are really leveraged. So, no, I wouldn't, I wouldn't mess around with the futures if you have a small, a small account, especially ES and MES, because right now you have to have some idea of where, of where that's going. And right now I'm 50-50 on that, so I wouldn't even know which one to use. And whichever one I used, I would feel that, eh, Eh, you know, where am I on this? As far as efficient, if you mean capital efficient, it's probably efficient. I just don't know if it's very effective. How much does the recent Israel-Iran events for the rest of the Okay, I already answered that. Do you have any opinion on LNG tanker overcapacity? Yeah, well, uh, I did talk about natural gas before, and given... That you had the warmest uh, winter uh, on record for the U.S., second warmest on record for Europe and Japan. Um, you just don't need you don't need the natural gas. So there's a whole bunch of it out there. Just a whole bunch of it out there that nobody wants. Ships not running at full capacity and a massive backlog of fleets. <clears throat> or at the beginning of the Ukraine war will come online over the next year. Stocks of tankers have held up now, but charter rates may come under pressure to oversupply. Yeah, well, it's if you <coughs> if you foresee global uh, the global temperatures that have been going up. I'm not going to call it global warming. We'll just call it global ten temperatures going up over the last 20 years. If you think that that's just going to turn around and head down, then yeah, then 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 there won't be any overcapacity. But if you think that is simply just going to continue in one direction, well. I live in a country where there is no natural gas. There's no need for natural gas. My house has no heater, none. Uh, my pool is got a solar heater. Solar heater means the sun. <laughs> That's it. Just the sun hits the water and it heats up. Um, so if 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 more and more, uh, you know, uh, zones are going to slowly increase in temperature, such that winters are milder, less snow, and warmer, then yeah. That, uh, that is not going to change anytime soon. Uh, any simple 
any simple to assess potential short ideas to have as a backup and equity research analyst job in any simple to assess potential or simple I guess simple way to assess potential short ideas to have as a backup in an equity research analyst job interview while well, for for what um, like a short position on 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 what uh, off the top of my head I am I mean uh, a simple way to assess potential short ideas well you could do it bottom up or top down I think that's the simplest way top down you could say well given these macroeconomic factors this industry never does well uh, and bottom up is you would have to know companies you would have to know specific companies and well that's a lot of work so I don't know about simple I bought the investing and in read books you recommend in your jelly bean section on your website it was half oh, half off. I look forward to reading it. Do you see a recession occurring prior to or after the election? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. You know. Your belief with more than three cuts leads me to believe you expect something to break before November. No, no, I'm I'm not betting on some external event here. Which I can get by. I think one of the biggest drivers of this market will continue to be the AI craze. Mm, yeah, given what ASML did today, given the reporting on the EUV uh, machines from ASML, down significantly uh, year over year for the first quarter. What was it, like 33% down on the amount of units sold? And that is a leading indicator for advanced chip, uh, for, uh, advanced, uh, uh, chip demand at least on the production side so I don't know is ASML results going to put a dent on the AI thing any weakness in video earnings would be the beginning of the sell off in my eyes I agree with you you get Nvidia earnings coming in flat or even negative and it's it's over what's your opinion on Dr. James Thorne I don't know Dr. James Thorne Clinton didn't pay down debt yes there were budget surpluses a year or two but that actually increased those years due to off oh, off budget items well I'm not an expert on that so I'll take your word for it you have an update on where you think uh, the yen is headed well a lot more rhetoric coming out so <coughs> intervention <coughs> sorry intervention I don't know that it's going to gain strength on its own could you put out a video on how to execute fed funds futures trades either here or the applied series I have in the applied series it is in there uh, I'm trying to think of what uh, video it would be in. Interest rate futures, yeah. You just buy it. I mean, if 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 you want to uh, buy the Fed funds futures like any other futures contract, you simply just buy it. I'm trying to make sense of TLT's recent sell-off. Seems market participants took Fed's data-dependent approach way too serious. Yeah. That is the problem with the Fed saying they are data dependent is the market then becomes data dependent and every data point, every data point is the most important one and the most volatile. Every single economic release is risky day for bonds, yeah. I thought that Middle East tensions would help push yields a bit lower, but everything's upside down as equity markets are having a big party and bonds are being punished. Trying to make sense of the day-to-day -day moves in the market, a lot of this stuff is random you do have to really back away from this and this is the problem of looking at your portfolio every day is you can see the red ink and then you start to get worried and then you start to think how bad it's going to get and you think it's going to continue and then you got to get out you got to get out all right try not to look at your portfolio try to try to look at the market and say well you know it's going down a day but does that invalidate my beliefs you know markets spend 70 percent of their time going up in the next 10 years, will the market be higher at some point? Yep. 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 Period. Yep. In 10 years from now, will home prices be higher at some point? Yep. Yes, they will. Yep. Uh, I will interpret the sell-off as an opportunity to double my duration position. Hope it will pay off short-term. But why hope it pays off short-term? Who cares if it pays off short-term? Hope it pays off. It doesn't have to do it short-term. Seeing S&P heavily advanced in the recent year will hurt my eyes. Can the U.S. achieve a soft landing at all given the recent rise in yields? That is 
That is the question. I, uh, I am skeptical. I mean, I've said this in the market outlook when we get to the S&P that I'm, I'm just surprised it's holding up. I'm skeptical. Uh, I wouldn't be a buyer of beta at this point. There are nice individual plays, but uh, I, I, I wouldn't be a buyer. Uh, can it achieve a soft landing? I didn't think so, but here we are. <laughs> so I don't know that in this, in this age, if, if any of the experience I have uh, matters, there's something, there's something odd going on that I just don't quite understand at this point. Maybe that's what it is. It's just odd, and it's not going to hang around long. It'll correct, and everyone will say, well, we should have seen it coming, right? After the fact, everything seems obvious. Swelling debt, you say, means U.S. will not be able to service. Thus, Fed must cut. Hence, rates will drop, and TOT will go back up. Yeah, well, with more words, but yeah. Higher debt level means higher risk, so rates... Well, I don't know that it means higher risk. So rates should comprise more risk premium for U.S. debt. Quite contradicting impacts. Everything, uh, well, the world is full of contradictions. There's never if A, then B. It's always if A, maybe B, maybe C, maybe neither one. Maybe you need D to get to B. Maybe you don't need D. Maybe you need E, F, and G, and if that's there, A doesn't lead to anything at all. But if E, F, and G are there on a Tuesday afternoon, A may lead to B. You know what I mean? Like, that's what the market is. There's, there's no if A, then B. If there was, uh, finance would be taught in computer science, and none of us would be here. We'd all, would all be, you know, everything would just run on algorithms if the market was if A, then B. <clears throat> Which one will win? Will we ever know? Yeah, you'll know on the first week of November. U.S. politician will not allow U.S. debt to be on serviceable level, right? Right? <laughs> yeah, I don't think so. Still holding ABR? Yes, I am. Adding to it? No, just holding it. If you were in charge of eradicating the U.S. federal government's $34 trillion of debt, what would you do? First steps through endgame? I'd inflate it away. I would, uh, I would allow inflation to run at uh, a rate uh, above my cost of financing. So if it costs me on average 3% across all my debt, I would allow inflation to run at 4%, which means revenues are increasing at 4%, uh, while the debt, that, you know, if I'm not paying the interest on it, well, let's say I pay the interest on it. Revenues are increasing 4%, I'm paying the 3%, and then the rest I'm paring down on the debt. I, I, will, I would inflate my debt away in a very benign way. In other words, I'd be targeting 4 to 5% inflation. <clears throat> but to do that, I need the Treasury, uh, oh, sorry, I need, the, uh, con I need Congress and the Central Bank to get together, and I need intelligence. I don't have either one of those two. But that's what I would do is I would, I would inflate away as much as I possibly can. <clears throat> I would balance the budget, period. How many uh, 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 spending programs just don't need to be there? I would, I would do away with a whole bunch of that stuff. And I would guarantee that I'd never be reelected. And this would all be useless and for naught. And it would all be undone by the next administration. So there we are. So I guess I would have to include uh, disbanding the Supreme Court. Uh, getting the military on my side, uh, disbanding the Constitution, declaring a democracy, uh, sorry, declaring a dictatorship uh, for the next 20 years, I think is the only way to get it done. Why does Canada not hold gold? Well, I think you'd have to ask Canada. I don't know the answer to that. We don't have an inflation problem. Well, look, you shouldn't even talk like this when you make statements like that. That's not what I said. And then when you add LMAO, I can tell that you're a younger person who doesn't quite understand what they're talking about or what they're hearing. Uh, maybe, maybe TikTok is where you need to be. I said, we don't have a general price inflation. That's a very specific term in economics when we talk about the general price level, general price uh, inflation. You can have inflation in certain sectors, but that does not mean you have inflation. You have specific inflation to specific sectors but you don't have a general price inflation. I'm making the statement that we don't have general price inflation. You have specific inflation. Now who's laughing? I'm laughing at you.
laughing my ass off, rolling on the floor, laughing my ass off at you. <laughs> what is your view on the latest avalanche of selling in the financial sector, especially banks last week? Well, you do have rates that are going to be higher for longer, which is not going to be friendly for commercial real estate. So if there's going to be uh, write downs in that sector, uh, these are the conditions under which it would be created. So yeah, do I think it's overdone? Eh, I wouldn't touch a regional bank. I wouldn't touch a regional bank. Given your stance on U.S. debt levels, along with the market's forward premium, expecting a 10% correction. The outlook for equities seems to be bleak. However, as a young investor, I know you advocate for time in the market rather than timing the market. Do you think it's wise to still allocate capital? Yeah, as long as, you know, I mean, if you're, if you have one big pile of capital and that's all you'll ever have and you put it in the market now, maybe not such a good idea. But if you're going to be contributing over a life, yeah, it doesn't matter. Yeah, no one likes to see red in their portfolio, but as the market's going down, your next contribution means you're buying it at a lower price, right? 2024 is not in the bag for Trump. Mm, I'm going to disagree with you there. Both camps are deeply unpopular, pretty much. But segments of the core constituencies that have turned voters off. Yeah, but you only have two choices. You know, even if you get a record low turnout, it's still going to be, it's still going to come down to a few states. Are you familiar with Looney Hour podcast? Um, I don't think so. Any thoughts on Kill em? Canadian, I know what I know. What Kill em is. I like them. I like them. Yeah, um, good quality. They're in the 16s. Are they touching the 16s? I'd I'd load up if I saw a 15 handle. I'd be interested in the lower 16s. I don't want a good deal. I want a great deal. I don't want to buy something that is slightly undervalued. I want to buy something super undervalued. I want to buy a mistake from the market. I want the market to make a colossal blunder and a mistake and I want to back up the truck and load up. So I'm not interested in buying at a, oh, that looks like an attractive price. I don't want an attractive price. I want a completely unfair price. So I will uh, continue to watch it. Uh, both on Kiln. Uh, and uh, there we go. That's the week.